Hey, what's going on? This is Melanie Fiona Live and Direct from one of my favorite places in the world, London, with my homeboy. TV Strata right now, and you're watching Soul Culture TV. Hanger on the trigger, let it bang, bang, baby, let it bang. I don't give a dang, cause I'm a rebel kind, watch me do my thing. So, you and I have some fam in common, don't we? Yeah. We got a little, we got a little, yeah. a little family going on. So tell me about the Rock Nation takeover. You know, tell me how that all came about. I think like Jay and that must have heard a few yeah. things. You know, what I mean, they come over. We spoke about a few things, and then it's connected, man. We get along real well. And then I went over to LA a few times, talking about what's the best way to make the thing happen, and then. I guess we came to an agreement, like a joint venture, like both labels coming together and finding new artists to bring through, man. Yeah, I remember when I met your your managers from here. Oh yeah. yeah. And they came over, and they yeah. were, we all we went to a No Doubt concert. Yeah. And they were telling me about you, and they were yeah. telling me that they want you they want to break you in the states and everything. Yeah, they were, Jack and Archie. Rock Nation. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Shout out to Jack and Archie. And um and they were just really cool, and and, and they spoke really highly of you, and it's just it's a good look, I think. Yeah. That now it's all coming together. Yeah, so we're that's family good. now. It's all yeah, family so now. Good, so oh, good. good. Seeing as we're family now. It all found up. Who has more input, Rock Nation, SRC? You know, it's tough because I'm fortunate enough to have like three entities. Like yeah. I've got SRC, which is my label that goes and swinging for me. Yeah. I've got Rock Nation, which is my powerhouse co management team. Yeah. And then I've got my production company, Title Nine, who's, yeah. which is who I've been with since day one. Okay. Um, they're like, they, they will be like your rough. Rough squad. Rough squad. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. except, except there's no other artists. Like it was my executive producer Carmen, yeah. who's also my co-management team. You know, Michael Michelle and Dilobi. Like they're they're my production company, so they are like the foundation for me. That you know took me in and okay. slept on their couches yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know yeah. when I didn't have anything to do and helped me really get to where I am. Okay. So, so it's 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 a I have like a real triangle of people that work together. And, and it's good because everybody has their rules, but like my Title Nine crew like holds me down yeah, like yeah, at the yeah, end of the day good. after hours. So it, it's nice, and you know what it is when you have to have family behind you. Yeah, and cool, like, cool. Cool. yeah man. And like, and that's where you tell the difference where people that stick with you through the hardest times, you know. What I mean? Sure. Yeah, man, and that's one thing that I've learned is that like when you have like a squad behind you, yeah. those are the people that are with you when you don't have a number one record, yeah, when yeah. people don't know your name and they're yeah. not singing your songs. Yeah. Like those are the people that matter. So. Yeah. So it's 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 important. I feel like you got that too, which is yeah, why you, you've that. had success, which yeah. is good. You, you got signed by Steve Ricky, right? Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to know because differently, different situations, the people that sign you have an impact in your career. Oh, and sure. Don't, so I wanted to know what kind of impact you have. You know what, Steve? When when I started chopping all my record deals in, in the states, I was I went to all the major labels, yeah. and what Steve had for me was a passion for the music that I did. Yeah. And that's like what he said. You've seen that, like he did that with all the hip hop. I mean, he, he's the guy behind Wu-Tang yeah. and more recently like Akon. Yeah, yeah. But nobody else believed in Akon. It was like, yeah. who is this guy with yeah, this yeah. unique voice? He believed in Akon and that's what Steve has. Steve has like that passion, that fight. He's not gonna take no for an answer. When he believes in something, he'll go in swimming for you. Yeah, that's what you so need. for me, having, having an executive like that to go in and fight for the money to do certain things yeah. and make viral projects. Like I did a lot of cool things and tour support and things like that. Yeah. Like he just stood behind me from day one. Yeah, so you yeah, know yeah. for me, Steve Rifkin is, he's just like had a mega impact because people are like, who is this girl and how is she able to do all these things? Yeah. But you know, when you have somebody like Steve Rifkin behind you who's like, yo, this is the next big thing, yeah. people will pay attention and listen. That's, that's, that's so, important, I think. A lot of people don't see that, you know what I mean? When you see an artist, you just think, what's that? There's always something or someone behind Yeah, because I went to like a lot, I went to a lot of record labels that were like, yo, we like the way you look, yeah. we like the way you sound, yeah, yeah. we like the way you sing, but we don't get the music that you oh, want to yeah, do. We don't know yeah, what to yeah, do yeah. with the music that you want to do. Yeah. yeah, he understood it. He was like, he he said to me, he said, I understand the vision of who you are. I don't want to change that. Yeah. Go make the album you want to make. And yeah. the first place I went was London. Yeah, that's, that's the best thing. I came to London and I worked yeah. with um, Rural and I worked with Future Cut. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. you know, and, and they were on my album. So, you know, it was, it was a real, like, it, it's very important to have somebody who believes in you. But I need advice because yeah. I'm on, like, I'm going on to my second album. Yeah. So, what did you, what's the difference you feel between coming off of your first going to your second and now your second going to your third? Because like for me, I feel so much pressure to call my yeah, second because now people are like, well, is she going to solidify herself yeah, as an yeah, artist? Yeah. What, you know, what, what is she going to do? Where is she going to go for the first album? Because people accept you for your first album, yeah. but sometimes when you try to go somewhere else, they, they can't take, yeah, it. Yeah, take yeah. it. So like, what, what do you think that's, is different? That's, that's what the, that's what the pressure was, I guess. But from the first to the second, 
really to a lot of people feel that this is going to be my second because the first one's a bit more underground underground so, okay yeah so to me personally the first one's a bit more what i was going through obviously yeah. and it's a bit more like i say like you say on the road yeah, yeah, it's a bit yeah. More so and on the, on the second one because it was more commercial right people are thinking is he going to follow up with that sort of sound, sound or, right. you know what i mean and so that's where the pressure comes in mm. i just like making music like an artist you got to be creative i believe all so, the time so people just have to have uh, a set to but at the same time you got to have on your mind how to like make that it's a thin line you know what i mean yeah that's, no that's i know but I, I feel like i try not to get involved in the pressure of it yeah. all and just kind of be like well if people respect me for because my first album's so diverse yeah. in like different sounds like I've rock, hip hop, army, okay, soul, yeah. you know, yeah. pop, reggae, everything on there. Yeah. So for me, I always just felt like I wanted to just if I just continue to make good music as opposed to one style of music, yeah. you know, whether like commercial or pop or rock or whatever, yeah. I just felt like if I just keep it good, yeah. then people will respect me for that because that's all I want. I just yeah, want that's, to that's, that's the main thing. Good I believe music, right? good music is good music. You Absolutely, know what I mean? for sure. And I don't know. I think I don't know if it's it's like. People always say, say over like stateside, London, UK, it's yeah. always different how they set oh, music. Sure. You know what I mean? So at the same time, say you're recording a music album and then I don't really believe you should like, put yourself in the boxes and like, Never. for these people or for that people. Just make good music. Man. For all over. Yeah. Yeah, 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 true. So we're both young, fairly new artists. What is the biggest lesson that you've learned, you think? Because I feel like even just in like the short it hasn't yeah. even been a full year for me. Yeah. I've learned a lot of lessons. I've learned a lot of things. So, like, what is like the biggest lesson you think that you've learned? I you think, learned? I think, you know what? Just recently, I've realized that what I've learned there's a lot of things where you learn little things, but one of the main things is that you gotta go with your heart, man. There's a lot of people that obviously are like in positions where they they believe to like know what's best. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's course. their job. But yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes you have to go with your heart. You have to go with your heart, man. And that's one thing I've learned. I always stick to my heart, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm the same way. People always ask me that too. Like some yeah. artists are just like, what's the best advice that you've yeah. ever been given? And it's always been, listen to your gut. Like, yeah, man. Because you it's, 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 your, yeah. it's yourself. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes, truly, the way that I, I feel about it is, is that it's not just you talking to yourself. Yeah. It's something else. It's a yeah. higher power. Yeah, it's a higher energy. It's feeling inside that's you, telling you what you need to be focused on yeah. and what you should do. Yeah. And I feel like every time, and Brandy was one of those artists who, yeah. who took me aside and said that to me, and she was like, every time I ever went against listening to my, my gut, yeah. my heart, she's like, I went wrong. Oh, okay. And so I've never forgotten that. Yeah. Because I, that's like, I mean, I love Brandy, she's one of my yeah. favorites. So hearing her tell me that, in, at this point in my career, is something that I always try to remember, like never go against what that feeling is inside here. I walk it out on them running from the law I hit the borderline, they're trying to trap me So let's get 